Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another virtual craft um, here on the Hedberg Public Library Facebook page. Um, so today we have a very fun craft that is basically going to be using um, all the things that you have around your house to kind of upcycle them and make them into something new. Um, so today we are going to be decorating um, tin cans. Um, I have a bunch of these tea cans. Um, it's also great if you can do them with glass jars, um, any kind of like soup cans you have lying around. Um, really the sky's the limit. You can t use everything you're going to learn here today um, and basically apply it to any kind of thing that needs a new life around your house. Um, so I am a little bit early, so I'm going to go ahead and get set up here. Forgive the crackling. All right. Go ahead and scooch back into my place here. And since we have a couple of minutes, I'm going to get set up again. Make sure I have everything ready to go. Hope everybody is having a good day, uh, staying safe within your home, making sure you're washing your hands, keeping that social distancing. Um, it is pretty nice out today, so feel free to go ahead and have a nice walk around your neighborhood. Um, if you are in the Janesville area, our parks are still open. Um, so we have a, about 65 different parks for you to choose from. So go have a walk with your family. Um, go enjoy the sunshine while you can. Um, I think we're expecting a couple more storms, at least on, on my part. Um, all right, so that is set up. So I'll be able to see, um, be able to see uh, everyone who's joining us now. So feel free to go ahead and give this post a like. So I know you're here. Feel free to chat with me, ask questions as you have them. Um, just say hi. Um, as I borrowed from Aaron Mankey's lore, um, I like it when people say hi. <laughs> All right, and we have just about a minute here. So we're gonna wait for a couple more people to join um, and get themselves situated before we start on our upcycling craft today. So we're just about started. Um, Jamie, I see that you're here. So thanks for joining me, Jamie. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like it's three o'clock, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So today, if you missed the beginning of our video, just another reiteration, we are going to be upcycling um, items that we have around our house. Um, so this is just a bunch of tea cans that I have, I happen to have laying around that I wanted to do something a little more fun with, um, as nice as a scuffed up old tea can is, um, you know, it's the perfect size for me to keep my hair ties in, to keep my pencils in, um, but it's not as fun when it's just a scuffed up old tin, um, when I can make it something more new and exciting. So you can kind of see, we're going to be doing some cool designs. Um, and I'm going to show you some fun techniques with that. Um, so there's that. So there's a couple of things that you're going to need. Um, you can feel free to mix and match and explore with any of these ideas that you have. Um, these are just the base things that I'm going to be working with today. So the first thing you need is you need your item that you want to give a new life to. So I'm going to be using a tea can. Um, you can use things like mason jars. This I have a baby food jar hanging around. Um, you can use tin cans, old vitamin bottles, um, pretty much anything acrylic paint will stick to, um, which is a lot of different things. So feel free to have some fun. Other things that I have with me um, are, of course, my acrylic paints. Um, these are things that I've just been sitting in my craft drawer for probably too long. <laughs> um, so there, you can pretty much choose any kind of color you want for your base. Um, today I chose um, a pretty like turquoise color that I had. Um, in my demo project, I chose purple. Um, so you basically want to have your base color. 
Um, and then you're probably going to want white, black, and brown if you can find it. Um, but you could, again, you can mix and match and choose however you want. I kind of wanted to do more of like a vintage -y look. Um, so that's why I have the white and the black and the brown to kind of shabby chic it, so to speak. <laughs> Um, also, another thing that you're going to need is a hot glue gun with some glue sticks. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's a little dry in my house today. Um, and um, some optional things you're going to need are is sandpaper. And then any kind of like charm or buttons or any kind of other tchotchke that you might want to add to your upcycled project. So. For this one, I have um, an old bracelet that broke, so I had some beads lying around. So I have these neat little flowers and a couple of pearls that I'm going to add to my project. Um, you will also need paint brushes, something to put your paint on, whether that's a plate um, or if you have a palette at home. You will need a cup or a jar of water um, so you can rinse out your brushes. And then if you choose to um, join me in making the shabby chic tin can, you will need paper towels or an uh, unused sponge, whichever you can spare for this project. All right, so I guess I'm, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first, I found it kind of um, helpful for um, my past projects to sand, um, especially if you're using a tin can, and this is kind of like a newer tin can, so it has the enamel still on tacked. Um, it's going to make it a little bit harder for the paint to stick to that. So I'm going to help it along by using my sandpaper um, and kind of just gritting it up. You don't have to use sandpaper, but it might require you to put um, an extra layer or two of your base color down. So I had already started this one, so I'm just going to finish up a few spots that I missed. have to be much. You don't have to sand off all of the color. Again, this is just helping your paint stick. These also um, make great gift boxes. So if you want to put fun things in it like candies or a gift card, um, it's kind of a fun way to, again, recycle what you have around you, but make it a little more fun, make it a little more useful again. All right, so the next thing we want to do is I'm going to start adding my design to it. So you can kind of tell on this one that I have this neat three-dimensional design on it. I did some like antique curls on it. Um, this was one of my first attempts, so it's not pretty. Um, but that's okay because I have all the time in the world to keep practicing, redoing it. Um, it is just hot glue, so if I decide I don't want it, I can go ahead and just pick it right off. Um, if like my my um, my paint job on here didn't turn out as nice, it's supposed to say things. I didn't. It didn't hurt. Turn out as nice, so I can just paint over that and try again. Um, I can add as many layers as I want. I can take away things I want and continue to play with it until I decide I like it. Um, so there were sides on this that I decided I did like, so I decided to leave it there. All right. So now that we have prepped our can, um, I'm going to use a damp paper towel that I already have set aside. And I'm going to try and get all of that extra dust off of it. Um, again, helping um, and making sure that um, the paint will stick to it. So if you have something that has um, like labels on it, um, or you can notice like on my glass jar here, I still have some sticky stuff on it. Um, something that helps to remove those labels is if you set aside either in your kitchen sink, or if you have a container, you fill it up with warm water um, with just a little bit of Dawn dish soap and let it soak for about five minutes. It will help get that stickiness off. It will help get um, the labels off as well. So again, it's easier to work with. All right. Make sure I get all the dust off the lid too. And I'm just gonna start making a design on it. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So I really liked um, like the dots and the kind of squiggles, the funky stuff I did on the top here. So I'm going to try and recreate that. Um, you can always use the internet to see if you can find references of objects that you like. Um, see if there's like any kind of like cool old tin cans you want to recreate. So I'm just going to use my hot glue to create that three dimensional design. And make it whirly and swirly however I like it. And you may decide that you don't want to do whirls and swirls, you don't want to do any kind of design, you just want to paint it. That's totally fine. And I'm kind of swirling the my hot glue gun so I don't get those strings. So now I have my fun, funky design here. And I'm just going to leave that off the side to dry. All right. So next I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my tin can here. Now I want to be, I want to make sure that whatever tin I'm using, I'm making sure that I'm not going to put hot glue um, or like a lot of paint around the area that my lid is going to go over. Um, this one, my lid fits inside the can, so I have all of this space to work with, but make sure you're just keeping an eye on that. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to try doing some more whirls and swirls. Go ahead and take your time on this. My hand is a little shaky. I had too much coffee today. <laughs> I'm just doing what I can. All right, and I noticed that I have a few stringies, so I'm going to make sure that it's not hot and get some of those hot glue strings out of there so it doesn't show up when I paint it. And I have my trash can down here. So again, it's not perfect, but it's fun. I have my, my swirl on there. And I'm just going to keep doing that to <coughs> as many sides as I want. If you want, if you don't want to freehand this, you can feel free to use a Sharpie um, or any kind of marker and draw out your design first. That'll give you something to follow so you don't have to freehand it. I'm feeling daring today, so I'm just gonna wing it. <laughs> And I think on these sides, I want to do like a fun diamond pattern. So let's see how that will work out for me. And we'll 
do one more. All right, so now I have my little diamond shapes. You can see those a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this just a second to cool down so I'll be able to work with it. Um, my lid has been sitting there for a while, so it's nice and dry. It's not um, tacky. It's not going to go anywhere. So now we're ready to start with our base. So choose whatever color base you want. Um, I decided to go with this nice teal turquoise color. <laughs> it's a blue. And I'm just going to go ahead and coat my entire lid with it. making sure I'm getting around all of the, the nooks and crannies that the hot glue has created. Make sure I get the sides here. And this can get a little messy, so if you want to use a smock um, or anything like that to make sure you protect your shirt. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you don't want to put um, too many coats on all at once because if you here I'll just do like a demonstration because if you brush one spot too many times it like the color starts coming off so it's possible that you will have to go through and do um, multiple layers letting one dry coming back repainting over it um, however you, you would like to do that like I said this is a fun creative project I'm going to give you the base steps on how to do it, but then you can feel free to play around with it. Um, if you do play around with it and find out, you know, discover something really cool, please, please, please share it on our Facebook page. Um, I want to see how all of you are keeping busy and having fun and recycling objects that you have around your house. Um, I've seen a lot of really cool projects that people have been doing, um, so please share them with us. Now I'm going to go through and do the same thing to the tin can. Oops. Have someone trying to contact me. So I kind of noticed that I didn't quite get all of the little stringies. So I will have to go back through and pick those off um, later once this is dried. And I might have to touch up those areas or not. Maybe I'll just add it into my shabby chic design. We'll have to see. And again, I'm not globbing my paint on here. I want to make sure that things are covered. Um, but because I'm doing that shabby chic um, pattern, I'm not going to worry too much about, you know, seeing through it, making sure my brush strokes are even. Because um, I'm going to kind of mess it up <laughs> in my next couple of steps. Making sure I'm getting around all of that hot glue. If you need a little bit of inspiration, I highly recommend checking out Pinterest. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, there is a lot 
of really cool upcycling projects for tin cans um, between pencil holders and earrings and making lanterns and all sorts of cool stuff. This is just one of the things you can do. Um, if you want to keep this idea in your back pocket for Halloween, I saw a really cool tutorial on how to make like potion bottles. So if you want to make some Halloween potion bottles, maybe you just want it for now. Um, so there's some really cool like antique looking ones. All right, great. So I've got my first coat of my base down. And I'm going to go ahead and set on that. Um, you might want to put down paper towel or newspaper or something like that. This is just an old card table I dug out of my basement. So I'm not too worried if I get paint on it, but maybe you are worried about your dining room table. <laughs> this one doesn't need too much of another coat, but I'm going to do one just, just in a couple spots. Especially on the sides here. All right, I'm gonna let that sit aside. Excuse me while I dig through my store here. Grab a little more paint. add a little bit more going through looking at spots yeah I missed a really a really big spot right there so I'm gonna go over that one And you may have to wait um, a few minutes in between each coat again in order to um, make sure that it stays and you're not just like scraping it around. All right, and I have that covered as much as I'd like. So I'm gonna let this sit for just a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna clean my brush. <coughs> Wipe it off a bit. All right. So now here's when I'm going to have to decide whether I want to make it shabby chic, whether I want to make it look kind of like rusted and antique, um, or really what I want to do with it. Um, I also might want to use this time to start thinking about where I want to place my my tchotchkes or my little um, little accent pieces that I found around if I want to stick those on there um, and thinking about that. Uh, so in the meantime, does anybody have any questions? Feel free to comment if you have any questions. None so far. And that's okay. Um, you can also feel free to comment on this video after it's gone live. Um, we have people checking our Facebook all the time, including myself, um, so I can answer more questions after that as well. Um, if you're looking for more things to do in the meantime, um, feel free to check out our children's Facebook page. Uh, if you have little ones at home, we're running story times over there um, and a lot of um, fun book recommendations if you're looking for something to read. Um, if same thing if you check out our teen page. We have Gabby over there working um, on doing book recommendations, talking to teens. Um, feel free to chat. Um, if you're looking for an opportunity to engage with people and to talk about what you're reading, watching, um, and other nerd things, um, be sure to check out our Twitch channel, Pages and Positivity. 
Um, you can find links for that all over our website. Um, but every day at noon, Gabby and myself stream for about an hour. Um, and we talk about all sorts of things. Um, we talk to you guys, see what you're reading, what you're up to, how you are hanging out in this time of isolation and other fun things. Um, uh, also, if you check out our Facebook or our Hedberg.org, our website, we are posting um, things on our calendar of when we are going to be doing different crafts. I plan on doing more crafting videos um, at least every Monday and Wednesday at 3 p.m. And this Friday, I will be hosting a very special sew along um, where we will be, I will be going through the steps um, and teaching you step by step how to make um, face masks. If you are interested in learning on how to, you can go about um, making your own face mask for donating to hospitals and other health facilities that are asking for them. Um, keep in mind that these are directions that have been approved by a hospital. Um, they will not make you invincible, so you can't wear one and automatically go outside and be safe. Um, so I'll be chatting about that um, and sewing um, some, some face masks with you guys, um, as well as talking about other projects that we can be doing at home. If you get that itch that you need to do something and you need to help, um, of course, the best thing you can do to help is to stay home. Um, but if you want to do a little bit more, I will be hosting a sew along. Um, to teach you how to do that. All right, I think I've chatted at you enough, and I think these are dry enough that we are able to move on to our next step, <coughs> excuse me, which is the antiquing slash shabby chiquing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with that. So I can do a couple of things, um, and you can tell on this one, I decided to start with the black to make it kind of look tarnished. Um, for this one, I kind of want to do something crazy and start with the white um, to again get that shabby chic look to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get quite a bit of white paint on my paintbrush here and I'm just going to dab it around in different places. Now my paint isn't fully dry so it is going to start lightening that um, that blue that I have underneath it um, as it starts mixing. So I think I'm going to brush it around in some places, dab it in others. So right now I kind of have like this interesting cloud thing going on. But what I'm act going to do after that, I'm going to get a little more white over here, is I'm going to take my paper towel and gently dab up at it here. Making sure I'm getting all around, trying to get into those crevices so it doesn't necessarily um, stand out in one place or another, making, making sure it's all kind of mixed. And I get that cool, oh, you can't quite see it. You get this cool textured effect to it. Now it's going to look really cool when we start adding the darker colors, like the black and the brown, because that'll start to make it look a little bit rusted. And I'm just going to continue to do that to all of my sides here. I'm really excited to see how this is going to look with the diamond effect that I have. <coughs> Excuse me. And a couple more dabs. Now I don't want to use the same side that I just used because it's all blended. Um, so it's not going to really mix the white how I want it to, it's just gonna keep adding that lighter blue, which I don't necessarily want for this project. Um, maybe I'll want it later, maybe I won't. Again, we will see what future Claire wants with her project um, as it goes along. I 
I got some white on this side. My hand keeps getting stuck on the can as I'm trying not to, to paint over myself. <laughs> And again, just adding a little bit more white. <coughs> Excuse me. Fold over my paper towel so I have a clean side. And continue to dab on it. Making sure I'm kind of blending. Um, to make sure that I don't have those, like, I don't necessarily want the splotches of white. I want more of the speckling, the shabby sheeking of it, so that it does more of that design. As opposed to here, I have, like, splotches of white. I want more of that to add to it. Now, you can go ahead and um, do the same thing um, using a sponge. Um, I don't have any sponges to spare, so I'm just using paper towel. Maybe you don't have paper towel to spare. Go ahead and toss that. So now the base, <coughs> excuse me, is all set to go. So while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing to my lid. I'm going to need a bit more white. See, I'm just doing kind of like globs. Maybe get some on the side. And then I'm going to use my paper towel to dab. That one, my hand kind of slipped, so I it a little bit rather than dabbing it but it's kind of an interesting effect so I'm gonna leave it and it doesn't need to be perfectly blended because I still want to keep some of that dark paint in there give it a little contrast Now I'm done with the white shabby sheeking. <coughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and make it look antique -y. Um, So I'm going to add a little bit of brown in some places. Um, you can mix a little bit of brown with red and see if you like that. But for this project, I think I want to stick with the cooler tone. So I'm just going to use... A little bit of brown here and there, wherever I feel like it. Maybe I want one right there. And I'm going to do the same thing. Get more paper towel. So now it has more of like a rusted look to it. And instead of using red, I'm going to try purple. See what that does to it. See, I kind of like that because then it adds just like another layer to it. And it blends a little bit better with... Um, the blue that I chose as my, my base color. You can go in and add maybe like a little bit of black to give it a tarnished look. 
And this is all just a matter of playing around with it, seeing what you like. Um, if you decide you don't like it, there's no problem with you going back over and repainting it. So now I have this darker weathered look to it. There we go. Give me just one second. My laptop is getting a little sleepy. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to speed this part up just a little bit for you guys. So I'm going to add my dabs of color on all four sides and work kind of quickly. So I don't have to bore you with all of my stuff. And I'm just kind of smooshing all of the colors together and picking up different colors and putting them down in others um, just so it gives it a different kind of look. Um, I don't need to like grind the colors in, but I am kind of mushing them together. I want to make sure that it's not just a blob of color. I want to make sure that the colors spread around. And you can see that it's a little bit different on all sides. Nothing rusts identically on all sides. It'd be impressive if it did, but I haven't seen come across that yet. And one last time. So this one's a little more difficult just because I have um, like a smaller design so I really have to get into all of the nooks and crannies but that's how that one turned out I think I want to add a bit more brown in this spot Now it's all set. So the final thing to do is just to go ahead and add my last bits of things I want to add. So I really do like these little flowers that I have. They, they match um, my design that I've decided with um, and my colors. So I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun and embellish as needed. So you can use um, old bits of broken jewelry, you can use buttons you have lying around, you could cut out flowers from paper you have lying around. Um, <coughs> really the sky's the limit of whatever you would like. Just remember you are working with hot glue, um, so you can get burned while doing this, so just be careful. A 
go ahead and put that on there. And now I'm going to wait for it to dry and it'll be all set. But in the meantime, just a couple little accents on it. And now I can go ahead and put my body pins in here. I can put a gift in here, um, mail it off to a friend, maybe make a new board game um, or cards or um, write down simple things every day that something that made you happy that day or something you're grateful for while you're sitting at home um, and keep it in your tin. And then uh, maybe at the end of the year, maybe at the end of the quarantine, open it up and see all the happy things you got to do. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do with, with my tin can. I think that sounds like a good idea. So yeah, this has been another virtual craft. Uh, this is just another simple thing that you can do with things that you have at home, um, whether you're new to crafting or old to crafting um, or somewhere in between. These are all different things that you can play around with, have fun, get a little messy, um, and keep busy while you're staying at home and keeping others safe. Um, so like I said, if you're looking for more fun things to do, be sure to keep checking back on our Facebook page. We're doing crafts and story times and book recommendations. Um, we also have things li listed on our website. Um, and be sure to check out Gabby and myself on Twitch um, at twitch.tv backslash pages and positivity. Look for the links on our Facebook page um, and keep talking with us. Um, and don't uh, feel free to please share any of the craft ideas that you and your family um, and friends are doing from your home. Um, if you have any suggestions of crafts to do, feel free to send them our way as well. Um, in the meantime, I hope you guys are having fun and I will see you um, next time. So, bye guys. Scooch on over. Bye-bye for real.